Hey, good people. I'm in Phoenix, for those of you who thought I left forever. Uh, the video you're about to see is from, like, August near Park City, Utah. It's a big reservoir and treatment facility that uh, an engineer figured out how to put solar panels on and save tons of money and all that kind of good stuff. And uh, we held the interview because they wanted us to hold it until they had their official launch in September. Then I got back and, you know, elections happened. So I thought you still might like to see it you know, nerd out with us a little bit. So, uh, enjoy. Bye. Hey, good people. I'm outside of Park City, Utah, and I'm standing on the, well, not the top of a mountain, but pretty high up here. And we're going to have a look across the valley, and we're going to learn today about solar panels sitting on a reservoir and why they are there um, and the service that they provide to a water service district. We're going to learn more about that in just a second. Tell me about the service territory and how, just how broad it is. And then we're going to talk a little bit about this is not a static lake, right? Yeah. So uh, Mountain Regional Water Special Service District serves about uh, 5,000 customers, so 5,000 end connections um, in the greater Snyderville Basin area um, in Park City. So just over the hill from Salt Lake and just north of Park City city proper. Um, it's all county-based ground and uh, our service area is about 25 square miles and we have um, about 200 miles of piping. Um, we have roughly 80 or 90 PRVs, so pressure reducing um, oh, stations, okay, right? Okay. Just because of our elevation change, we go from in the distance, you can see nearly 10,000 feet. Mm -hmm. We've got tanks at about the 9,500 foot level, mm -hmm. all the way down to here where we're about 7,000 feet, mm -hmm. and then um, down into the mid sixes, kind of in the valley in, in front okay. of us. And this looks like just a really big pond, yeah. but it's not. I think, I don't know if people can see, you were pointing to me the bubbles coming up here. I don't know if y'all can see that. Yeah, you can see the bubbles coming up. And, and you told me how much, that's water that's coming in from the river. Yeah, yeah so we've got a booster station that pumps um, as much off-peak power as we can, but um, it's about, it has a capacity of about 10,000 gallons a minute at full flow um, from a river that is about six miles away. We pump to this pond. Uh, and the pond is anywhere from six to 10 feet deep. Mm -hmm. um, it's about, uh, seven million gallons give or take in round numbers mm -hmm. and you know the pond level is not static it changes during the day um, we we pump up as much as we can out at night off peak you know mm -hmm. close to that eight nine thousand gallons a minute and then during the day um, we try and be off peak so the pond level would drop it can drop as much as three or four feet mm -hmm. um, so the floats have to accommodate that and then so the water is not static it's it's always coming in and always going out so it's always turning over in this pond it's not a not a uh, static body of water i never would have guessed that chris you were telling me a little bit about um the i guess the secondary benefits of having the panels on here and evaporation and all that good stuff maybe you can tell me about that sure yeah so we we have about a third of our um, surface area of the pond covered with the floating solar array um, some of the initial benefits from a solar standpoint is that the, um, the water is going to be cooler than the air. Hopefully it's going to keep the panels warmer or cooler. will also help with the efficiency of the panels during the heat of the day. Um, the pond is at about a 7,000 foot elevation. So at, at this elevation, the sun's pretty strong. It actually creates some pretty um, quick plant growth within our ponds or organic growth of plants in, in a pond that turns into a treatment system is not the best thing. So we're hoping that having the, the cooler water the shade is going to slow some of the plant growth, so we'll have less organics in the water, makes our water treatment process um, a little smoother, a little lighter on our system, um, and, and therefore also requiring less ultimate energy. You know what you're making me think of? In, you know, in Arizona, we've got the Central Arizona Project through a 300 miles of canal, mm -hmm. and we've been talking about for years trying to you know, cover those with panels, and the price has never come out, but hearing you talk about water treatment and plant life and keeping a cooler water temperature might be something that Central Arizona Project isn't thinking about as an ancillary benefit to all of that. So yeah, people have not been, nobody's been able to quantify, you know, some of this, the, the, the changes from a treatment plant. A lot of the solar system systems tend to be on wastewater uh, ponds, the existing installations versus, a, a, you know, we're doing culinary water. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a little bit different process. Um, you got, you can see the guys out here finishing connecting the panels. 
they're out here they're not live yet and you're going to have a big uh, kind of opening kickoff here in september yeah sometime in september the date isn't isn't set yet um but uh the funding for a good portion of this came from uh, rocky mountain power and the blue sky uh, group who um, basically people volunteer to pay extra on their on their bill mm -hmm. um, to pay into this fund for projects like this mm -hmm. and for us we were able to get a sizable chunk from Blue Sky as a grant to help with this um, to, so our ratepayers aren't necessarily paying for all of it mm -hmm. and carrying the whole load um, so having uh, having the cost benefit of it and, and a return on investment somewhere for us, we're hoping that this is a 10-year, 12-year return on investment. Oh, that's amazing. Cool. Chris, thank you so much for giving me the quick tour. Well. I appreciate it. Okay. I'm popping on again here real quick. I just think it's cool to see the, little, the, the workers down here. But also, Chris was telling me about something, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it because it's so far in the distance. Down in that building, Chris was talking about how they take water from way up high, and as it drops with gravity, it's almost like a hydrological dam but very small it's called basically called low head hydro or pumped hydro where you pump something up high at a certain time using clean energy and then take the energy off of it at a different time so basically they're just getting more clean energy and why is this exciting to me well because i'm a nerd but also because you have all these different little ways to generate energy Instead of just like one big power plant, you have a thousand clean ways to generate energy and that's the future. Like when we talk about what a clean energy future is, it is finding creative ways around you in very small ways to either save energy, generate clean energy, or just um, create efficiencies like with pumped hydro or, or just that gravity feed running turbines to give you a little more free energy. Um, that's what the future is going to be. I'm super excited about it. So I just had to pop back on again because Chris was showing me around the valley pointing at things and I wanted to share it with you.